world and some junior picks. Great to see you, James. Thanks, Andy. Good to be here. Sounds counterintuitive. You may be bullish on gold, but you reckon people shouldn't own gold mining stocks. Yeah, not at this point. You know, it's an interesting evolution in the gold industry with gold at $1,500. Let's look at Barrick, for example, which in 2006 produced 8.7 million ounces at a cash cost of roughly $154 per ounce. Now, they've got to re replace what they produce every year, and the only way that Barrick can do that is by acquiring other juniors. The juniors go out, find deposits, prove them up, take out the risk for Barrick. Barrick pays a premium and adds them into the inventory. Uh, so Barrick has had to raise... Uh, you know, billions of dollars to acquire these things, and the billions of dollars in additional stock issued acts as a downward uh, price cap on the sh on the share price. In 2007, at the end of the year, Barrick was $42. I think this week Barrick closed a couple of times in the around $40. I'm not sure what it's doing right now. So, as an investor who's held on to Barrick since 2007, you've made absolutely zero, and they paid uh, maybe a dollar 42 in total dividends since then. So it's more, in my view, a function of the structure of the market, given the high price of gold, that the senior producers can no longer sort of capture value and reflect it in shareholder, uh, shareholder value. What about a company like Gold Corp or Agnico that's growing its production in percentage terms much faster than Barrick? Right. Well, these are companies that are appro approaching uh, senior producer status. Uh, Gold Corp is certainly a little bit further ahead than Agnico Eagle. But those are the companies where you can still uh, invest in gold producers with a minimum, minimum of risk and still capture value as they grow their production profile. But those companies too, if they get too big, they're going to top out and they're going to run into the same problem where they've got to pay, pay billions of dollars every year to produce all of, replace all of the ounces that they've produced. Now, obviously, the possibility of Greece turning into another Lehman Brothers, a, a sort of unpredictable meltdown you think that'd be good for gold, but we got signs that they may have a deal on Greece, yet we saw gold going up today. Say the Greek bailout falls apart, what, what will happen to gold? Well, Andy, I personally don't believe that the price movement in gold is so related to the what's happening in Greece. I mean, for example, let's say they do solve the problem in Greece. All that means is there's going to be more debt stretched out over up to another two years before we come back to the same default question in two years. If, they, if the Greece problem goes away tomorrow, what's the next problem? Well, we've got the United States bumping up against a $14.2 trillion limit on its ability to borrow on the 2nd of August. The market's going to focus on that. And what is that? Nothing but bullish for gold. If you look at the 10-year chart on gold, you'll see the seesaw motion in gold that this is the, the recent movement is very much a normal part of. So given that gold's dropped below $1,500, one could argue that it's looking like it's going to make a rush for a new high above $1,600, which I still think is going to happen this year. Or you could argue that it's still going to be in a corrective phase for a bit. I don't think it's so much to do with Greece as it is to do with the normal seesaw motion in the, in the price of gold in the secular bull market. What about silver? Um, a lot of people seem to be saying we had a bubble there earlier this year. Do you see much upside for silver or are there an awful lot of disillusioned investors right now? Yeah, well, that's because investors tend to have the attention span of a gnat. And I actually <laughs> think the gnat has a bit of a better one. But, uh, you know, silver received a lot of publicity because all of the big uh, Canadian mining investors were pointing at silver and saying, you know, this is this is really an undervalued asset. And if you consider the fact that silver is roughly uh, 16 times more prevalent in the Earth's crust uh, to gold, then arguably the ratio in terms of how much silver you can buy relative to gold should approach 16 to 1, which would give us $300 an ounce silver. So given current levels and that sort of argument, uh, you're looking at much higher prices down the road. I think we're going to see $40 silver as we see $1,600 gold before the end of this year. And I think we could even see $50 silver and $1,600 gold even sooner. But I do believe that there's more upside in silver than there is in gold. Now, you think investors should play junior miner, mining stocks uh, as opposed to established producers. New Strike Capital, NES on the venture, what are they all about? Well, New Strikes uh, got 100% of the Ana Paula deposit in Guerrero, Mexico. Uh, they got it off of Gold Core, who um, more or less proved up a one kilometer by two kilometer geochemical expression at surface. 
Uh, New Strike has been drilling it, and today, for example, they announced a, I believe it was 119 meters of 3 grams per tonne, as well as 194 meters of 4 grams per tonne. I might have those backwards at this point, I'm not sure, but since January, when they started drilling, they've been uh, reporting repeatedly more than 100 meters of multigram per tonne hits, and this is only in an area measuring 175 meters by 55 meters within the one by two kilometer geochemical signature at Annapala. So they're gonna continue drilling over next year, and then probably by the end of next year or early the following year, they're gonna put out a resource estimate. But at this point, given the, the, the repetition and the density of the high-grade hits, I mean, there's, there's something big there, and the market is not giving it the valuation it deserves, and that really is the opportunity for investors at this point. Evolving Gold, EVG, why do you like this one? EVG I've liked since 2009, and it gets no love from the market whatsoever. Uh, they've gone through a series of presidents, and that's probably part of the problem. Now they've got Bob G in there, who seems to be very focused. They've just executed a joint venture with Agnico Eagle on their Rattlesnake Hills project. Agnico Eagle is going to put $41 million into the ground there to earn 70%, but then uh, Evolving's also got two more projects. Uh, one's called the Carlin Humble, which Everything in the Humboldt uh, tends to be very low grade, but very large. It's, um, it's produced over 75 million ounces in the last 100 years. And they've got an, also a new discovery called Jake's Target, I believe it's called, and uh, that's in Nevada as well. So Evolving Gold's got this huge project. I mean, the Rattlesnake Hills project has uh, intercepts of many, again, hundreds of meters at, at uh, you know, one, two, three, and four grams per ton and spread out over a large area. It's a new discovery, and uh, Agnico Eagle's paying a big chunk of money to earn into it. So given the current price at um, some odd sense, I believe it is, 125 million shares outstanding, it's a, it's a bargain. Now, James, you own both New Strike and you own Evolving, and then uh, I believe New Strike is in a fund that you guys have just launched. That's correct. James, thanks very much indeed. My pleasure. James West, editor of the Midas Letter. Coming up on the close, we're going to talk to Brian Goldner, the CEO of Hasbro. We're going to find out how much the money the company actually has riding on the success of that new transformer.